all right hello guys so this is the second part of the project that we have started if you are watching this video first time it means you haven't watched the previous one we started the e-commerce project and this is the second video so you can just go in there check the video description and check the first one out before you jump to this one all right so we have a uh, points ready as you can see and that is what we achieved in the previous video now let's go and make sure we enforce validation rules so you can see from our solution we have created our details um, specifically for our create and product so you can see from our create category and also our create product we have added a default validation attribute that is a required and um, you can add more if you want to have a specific number of uh, maybe length of characters you can um, put it in there and we we have also product and also update product and they are inheriting from their product base great so we have all read read required required now the next thing that we're going to talk about here is how do we enforce this so we can do this straight ahead in the controller that is where we known as a model state so in the previous one we did not do that so let's go in there and modify and add the model state to make sure we enforce the validation in here so if you create um, a custom validation using fluent validation with any other third library you can also call this you can manually validate it or you can do that automatically maybe af after this project i'll have a separate video on how to integrate fluent validation um, as well in the api okay so let's go to where is the controller so we go to our presentation layer and in there we have it as host so here in our controllers folder, we have a category. Now we see from all posts, which is taking in these models, these DTOs, we can um, implement this here. So we're going to say that if model state, so you can see we have model state here. Now this is going to return either success or not. So we can say if it is valid, but let's make it if it is not valid. So we negate it dot is valid. This is going to return true. So we're going to negate it and say if it is false, then we want to just return bad request and with the model state. So you know when when we are consuming this in the client, we do not um need to use this but when we are communicating through the api directly that is where this becomes important in the client i believe you're going to use the same model we're going to uh, make sure that our form has data notations it 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 we make sure it is valid before we submit and we can actually add some validations in there to also check but you know when you do the client validation you have to also do the server validation so there is a server validation that's what we're doing and after we are done with this in the client we have to also do same validation now let's have so we need to make this available in all the post and um, put endpoints so here we have post and that is put that is when updating so that is where we take in models as payload so we have them set let's do same to the controller that is a product so on the product we also have create then we also have update so when we do this it means our system our validation is not concrete and validation should be checked using this attribute the default one that we provided okay the next thing we're going to talk about here is we need to improve the exception handling you know when you check your ef core our repository in here there are a lot of exception that ef core can push it up such as maybe when you try to update when you try to save changes um, when you add when you update when you delete and there's an issue how can you manage that how can you handle that basically there are some ef core issues that you need to handle um, so these issues, there are also exceptions and we have database update exception. We have unique constraint exception. We have cannot insert null exception, maximum length exceed exception and numeric overflow exception, reference constraint exception. These are the biggest exceptions that EF core will just bring it out anytime you violate the rule. 
and in this case if you handle this with general um, exception handle like i exception and return a common message because i know that when you handle this exception you're not going to um, display this exception to the user right so you want to override this and now um, display user friendly exception to the user but how the user know what exactly happened it means we need to handle this low key exceptions in our infrastructure and we can uh, proceed it you can handle that in also the application layer as well so let's do that let's go to the infrastructure and in here let's add exception folder This should be a folder first, so let's create a folder. So that is an exception, but I think we're going to make this as a middleware. I think um, it's better we give it a concrete name. So let's make it as, so there is middleware. Now with this middleware, let's have exception handling middleware as a class in it so now with this we need to first install a library which will help us achieve these exceptions so let's go to the infrastructure um, dependencies and add NuGet packages and let's add the entity framework called exceptions.sql server because that is what we need. So let's add this package. When we are done, go to solution. And in there, from your dependency container, let's add dot use. SQL Server exception. I'm sure this should come from Alright, so I think it is not use SQL Server exception rather processor <laughs> Okay, so use SQL Server processor and this should come from the package that we installed i think it shouldn't be here rather it should be here okay so now we have this so as we done we can go to our hand middleware and create our middleware to handle that so let's make this as public you know when you go to our repository that we created you can see that most of the repositories they do have the implementation they do have save save changes or add delete and etc now within that we can handle the exceptions in there using try catch block but think of it you're going to have a lot of exceptions right and we're going to scatter our code with a lot of try catch we want to try our best to make our code readable and simple so we need to use uh, middleware to handle that this we're going to create it and our exceptions as soon as it get thrown we can catch it here and now check so we're going to make a check and see which type of exception got thrown then we can handle that so let's have our request delegate let's pass it in here so we need to install abstraction package Okay, so once we have this package installed, we can go ahead and create a method. So that's going to be a public async task, which is invoke async. So once you have this, maybe when we get this exception, when we try to save, and now when we get an exception from this, what can we do here? Maybe we can create an exception so we can pass in a customized message. And in here, we can also log exception. In case you want to log it, we want to log an exception to maybe a file or a database or wherever. 
um, we can do that. So here, let's get exception as an SQL exception. So we're going to say that here we have our inner exception. So we get it as an SQL exception. And in here, we can check if this exception is not equal to now. So this inner exception. It's not equal to now. That is where we want to perform this task. So we can just switch. Okay. So we see that here we are switching and we want to check if it is unit constraint violation or it is um, now um, in session. So we see here unique constraint violation. We can just passing any message, any user-friendly, any meaningful message to the user. That is when you have a relationship and the user decides to either delete it or um, add without providing the ID for that, all sort of constraints, you're going to have this catch and you can return it using the number here. Okay, so we have this handled nicely. Maybe we can improve this. Let's see. We should use an explicit type. Ah, that's great. We can also still improve that. And that's great. So we can pass it on straight ahead and we can move on. But in case it isn't that, you see this exception, in case it isn't um, DB update exception, then what can we do? That is where we can use this L statement. And here we can display maybe an error friendly message. Okay. So uh, 500 um, an error occurred while saving the entity changes. Okay, but in case it isn't any of these ex exceptions specified here and it is an unknown exception that we do not know, that is where mostly we need to log it and I return meaningful to the user. So here, once you have this catch, you know, it is DB exception when update is performed and it's in sort of that. And in case it isn't and it is different one which is not known, then we need to catch it with an exception. This is a just big container which catches all exceptions. So we can return or okay now with the message. Now this message is not advisable to not the best way to expose this message. Okay, so here instead of exposing this, we want to log this message. But well, we can also catch this message using an exception in the application layer. So maybe if you're having a login mechanism which implements an application, you can still catch this one. And now I'm logging in there and I return something meaningful to the user as well. Okay, so for now, let's maintain this. So we have our central um, uh, exception handling here using this middleware. Now, once you're done creating this middleware, you are not done. You need to register this middleware. So let's go to the solution. And now in our service container for the infrastructure, you can see from here we have our service container. And now in our service container, let's include that. So here we can say public static. Then with this infrastructure service, it takes in I application builder. So you can say app.use middleware and now what is the name of the middleware that we created let's go and grab that okay so let's return this app Now this should return I application builder. Okay. So before we forget it, let's go to our controller. Not the controller, the program. CS file. Now once you add this infrastructure service, we need to also use the pipeline. So app.use infrastructure service.
All right, so we have our validations um, included. We have our um, exceptions also handled in there. So when you check here, you can see we are having this unique constraint and we are not having foreign key. This is where a column should be unique. And in case it doesn't, then we have this exception. Then we need to use a foreign key. That is where when you add a product and add data and you need to provide an ID of a related table and you do not. That is where this also pop up. So I think we need to use that. And now the key or the exception number here, it is 547, which is a foreign key. So let's also add that. I think this should be here. So 547. Well, what do you think? Because we have 515. Anyone tell me that 547 comes before 515? <laughs> no, no, no. So it should be here 547. Actually, you can put it anywhere. All right. So that is this one. So these are the um, exceptions that you have. But in case when we check the exception and we do not have this exception, it's going to return, right? Because we do not have any default exception. We do not have that. So maybe we can also add default exception in there. And oh, we have this already. <laughs> we have this also. So when exception is not known, instead of returning the default one, maybe we can do this. That is when the exception is now. But well, we can also pass in the default one. So we also have a default and it's the same 500 internal server error. You see it's the same thing. So in case the exception that we're passing in here, it is the number is not part of what we have here. Return this. In case this exception is not under DB exception, then we're going to return that. Okay, and here, after doing this, maybe in case it is not DB exception, generally we're going to return our exception and we're going to um, return this. So you know whether it is this one or not, still we're going to call this because this exception is it's, it's a big container which is going to handle everything. So we're still going to see this. So let's run an application and test and see the, how the exceptions are being handled. So before we try this out, let's go to the solution. Now in our middleware, where we have all these exceptions being handled from the, the low level exceptions, from the DB update or DB context, from here, we want to focus on this foreign key and constraint violation. Because you know, we have Linked, we need to provide category ID when adding product. So if you refuse to provide it, we must hit this exception. So we're waiting to see this issue. Okay, let's check it out. We can put breakpoint here. Now I think this is the right place. <laughs> yes. Now let's go and put in some um, values and try it. We are not providing, although we have category ID. When you go to get all categories, I think we have category ID. Let's continue on. Yes, we are having two categories here, but we are not going to provide any ID of this to the product. So we go to product and we want to maintain the default category ID, which does not exist. And we have the default name, price, everything is default. Now let's click on execute and let's see. So if I click on step out, let's step it. Now it is going to have an issue. There's going to be an exception. Sure. Oh yeah, I have an exception. And look at the exception. So this is an entity framework exception. And here, ref reference and um, constraint violation. And that is what I'm talking about, foreign key constraint. So it's conflicted with a foreign key constraint, and that is a product category ID. So we know that. Now let's click on it whether to see this number is going to get hit. 547, that is a foreign key constraint. Now here, if you want to check even the number for this exception, you can just go to the next one. Hopefully it's an SQ exception. So watch here, and now within this exception, we can have the number in there. The number should match with 547. 
Check it out. You see the number? 547. So it means that this is going to get hit. And now we are waiting to see this. So let's step out, switch, and yeah, of course, we have it. Execute this and then break. So foreign key 409. And let's see. Four zero nine, so we are having a conflict, right? Four zero nine, but we are not having this content. Do you know the reason why? Check it out again. You see, we are not having that content. We have only the status code, and that is all. Yeah, maybe we forgot to add something. Do you have any idea on how to do it? We have to set the content to application or test. So let's do that and check it out again. So yeah. Since we're going to be using that for all the switch cases, as soon as we get it, we can grab it from here. Because we have the cut, and this can use this and that. So let's have our. Here we can have context.response. That content type, let's set that to application slash JSON. I hope you are done with this, isn't it? Now let's give it another try. So now once again, we go in there and perform same function, and this time around we're waiting to see message, not only the status code. So let's uncheck this, continue. On. It is done. Yeah, and of course we have it for so we can see we have foreign key constraint violation. So we have this here. Okay, so now we have in the, the message as well as you can see from here. That is a message that we are getting as an error message. And this maybe it's it'll help us. I don't think it is necessary to display this exact message because the user using the system might not know foreign key. What is it? <laughs> but you know. So maybe you can decorate this, can modify this to be user friendly to everybody who try to use the system. But for developers, you guys do understand this. I also understand. So let's maintain what we have in here. All right. So now that we are able to set this, I think we should use this also here. Catch. We should also specify in this context. This can be used or will be used for this because this is found in the try cut. And this is a cut. So if I set the context here, it means this is also inclusive. That's amazing, right? All right. The next thing that we're going to do here is every system must have a login. Login actually is very important. It helps you to notify, to get to read what the system is doing, how the system is being used. And in case you have an issue, you can also put it there. It's not about only login errors only. If you hear when you hear people talk about login, it's not about login only error. You can log information. What is going to the system, you can log it out there to the console, to the file, and maybe read later if you have time. But mostly we focus on the errors because that is where we want to tackle to make our system robust and resilient. So we try to log all errors so we can trace it up in there. We don't need to add the user. Did you encounter any error while using the system? We don't want to do that. The error file will give everything that we need. So we can just go to straight to the file and then read what happens in a day. And I'll see if there's any error. We can just go ahead and fix it. So let's do this magic. How do you do that? You know, error can be implemented through an application. So it means it must be in the core so that you can use it everywhere. It's not about logging errors only in in your infrastructure. You can also log errors in your application layer as well in your presentation. But you know, application layer is the middle which orchestrates all the other layers, including the infrastructure, the domain as well. So yeah, it's good at uh, it's good to put the interface in there. 
so that the interface can be used across like a service. Let's hop into it and see how you can do this. So before this, there are some packages that you need to install. I think I have the package references, so I'm not going to install them again. But well, I believe you know how to install packages, isn't it? Yeah, that's good of you. So you can just go to right click on um, your infrastructure and I click on add get packages. If you don't know, now you know. Now let's see. So I'm going to unload this project. Normally, that is what you can also be doing in case you have this package references out there. I don't want to re, um, install them again. So unload project, that's the infrastructure. And then here you go to the project, you have the settings here. And with this, I can add my packages references. So down here, we're going to be using four packages all from Serilog. I love Serilog most because it's flexible and it allows you to configure easily and also log to console to file everywhere. He can do it. So I like using Serilog a lot. Okay, but there are other log libraries that you can use. And log is there. Another log. So you can try them as well. I have videos. I think. Do I have videos on that? Well, I have videos on Serilog. Maybe I'll try and have videos other in um, other logs so you can know how to implement them as well. But for now, we want to implement Serilog. So this is the actual comp package Serilog. We want to um Razor that so we need to install this ASP.NET Core for dependency. Also, we need sync and file. For now, we want to log console to want to log errors to all all messages to the console and also in a file. So you can pass them here. Install these four packages. Are you done? The next thing I want to do here is you know if you do this, then you have to reload this project. But if you didn't do this, then I think you're done. You're done waiting for me. And now give me a second. Let me just reload mine. So we continue. Now I'll save this and I'll make sure that these packages are well installed. So I can go to dependencies. Packages. Oh, I still have one in here. Oh, yeah. I'm good. You see? So I have these packages installed without actually going through the package manager console okay so once i have this let's go ahead and create our login interface so in application layer that is where we need to create our interface we go to our services folder and now from the service you can see we have an implementation and we have interface so in the interface since there's going to be only an, an interface service is going to be implemented in infrastructure let's add folder and so this is login. Let's add an item. So that's application logger. Now within this, we need to define our login um, interfaces. Now this should be generic, so it can be used across the system. So we have these three interfaces. Let's go and add implementation.
So you can see that here we have implementation ready. We are login information, login error, and login warning. Let's go and register this. So where do you register this? In the service container. Alright, so we are done. We have an interface and an implementation being um, registered as type. Now let's go ahead and I use this. But before we use this, we need to register this. So um, logger should be added to the host. And we can have access to the host in the um, presentation. So let's go to the presentation program.cs. Now let's add the login here. So maybe on top you can add login. So in the configuration, that is what we're doing. We are enriching, we want to add the context. We want to also write to the console. We want to write to file. And in this file, we're going to create a folder known as log. And in there, we're going to create a file known as log.txt. And I'll log all our information or everything that you want to log, you want to log in there. So it's going to be appeared on the console and also in the text file. Now, the interval here is a day. So each day, create a file for a single day. So when this application runs for about five days, it means we're going to have five files. A day for a file, right? And we're going to have the day logs inside. So this is what we need. Now, let's add this log to the host. So we can do that. After this, we can start logging. So let's say this is log dot logger dot let's say information and on here we can do something like application is building because the application is building so after building we want to go ahead and execute it. So after it has done, before it gets built, we want to handle this with try. And let's catch it. So with this, once it's done, we have our try catch. What can we do? We need to use a server log request login. So maybe in the pipeline, we can do app dot use sorry log request login and what's it done let's add finally block so that what happens whether it is we have an error thrown or not this execution or this function is going to get executed we need to log dot close and flash we need to close it and i'll flash it as well we don't want to use an async because we're not checking the value for anything. We don't want to check the results. Okay, so in case you have an issue, what can we do? When the app is built before it runs, we can say that log.logger dot the same info. And we can say that the application it is not building, rather just running. Okay, so we're doing this so we can know that the server is running. If you want to, you can skip this. Well, let me let's put it there. But in case there's an issue, what can we do? That is where we need to log an exception. So log dot logger dot error. Now this error, let's pass in our ex, and also we can pass in a message. So application. to start all 
okay so we are having our login system being configured nicely now also we are not done we can also go to the exception middleware and also handle this error in there why is it good to handle this um, exceptions or log errors in the middleware now when you check this middleware that is an ending point let's say the ending point now if we have any error you see this is going to execute the next middleware and now when this middleware is being executed in case you have any issue this is going to get popped up now we are handling low level exception from any um, db context that is when we click on save in case there's an issue we're going to pop up and we can check it from here but aside from that, you see, we also have in if the exception that is coming in here, it is not an SQL exception. The DB update exception coming in here is not an SQL exception. Then we're going to have, because we have an if here, then we're going to have this else. Aside from that, there's an exception here. So in case the exception at all is not a DB update exception, then this is going to get caught, right? Now, when this gets called, now we are implementing login. So, we want to log to the console or to the file. So, that later on, we can also go through and know what happened. But as soon as there is a development stage, we can log everything from here. As soon as this error, can log it from here. But in production, you don't need to log this SQL exception to the console. Only log it to the file or maybe to another login uh, ui service which can give you a nice view of um, log presentation so you can just go in there and uh, watch it i've done a couple of videos on how to integrate um honeycomb for with open telemetry and i think uh, i did one too <laughs> maybe i'll put them in the video description okay so let's try and for our development process let's add it here now from the catch as soon as we get an issue we don't want to call a service here because when you call a service here even though it is not an exception this is going to get called we don't want to do that so let's put it here we want to call this only when exception happens okay so let's grab the logger so we say logger is equal to we have our context coming in So context dot um, request services. Then here we can get required service. Now with this service, we need the I app logger. Then this logger takes in this middleware. Now we can use this logger in this context. So whatever thing from here up to this, we can um, log it. Okay. So when there's when there's an SQL exception, quickly we want to just log that. And let's pick the inner exception. And maybe we can say that this is SQL exception and aside from that in case it isn't an SQL exception what can we do we can also use it here now if it's not an SQL exception we can also grab same and unlock it any other exception so as for that we need to use this that is a db update so we need to use this ex so we can say that's related ef core exception then that is if it is not any under the low level exception then we can also use it here power this we need to copy this because this cannot extend to this body and we don't want to also put it here so it can be called anytime that we're executing middleware even though there is no exception 
we want to skip that so we need to duplicate it or you can create a simple function down here to handle that now this logger we can just go in and pass this on so we say ex and there is unknown exception you know it's not good to return the service the exception itself here but for our development stage you want to return this exception as well okay in production this should be taken up and log it to the um, file or anywhere and that is all so now let's try this and let me just put the console I think we have an issue here. Let's check this out first. Now, what is the issue? So, two field log list. You're not having anything as well. Let's review this project. We have four succeeded. Let's try it again. So, I have the console. I think it's ready now check it out so that is a console and you can see that from here we have an uh where is it yeah application building application writing and now you can see we have now a lesson on the host we have this now application started right now check it from here we're having some requests started request finishing and etc so these are the starting ones and as soon as they are done we get the log in here so you can see that we have integrated our login now let's go and perform a tax and see whether this is going to happen and also want to check our solution in the program you know, in the host we must see a folder known as log and you can see we have it here if i click on this this file must be open oh it is not opening yet because the app is running but let's perform an operation here and check it out so let's do same we're going to we know we're going to have an issue isn't it <laughs> so you're going to log this exception in there now you can see from here we are calling this api product add we are pushing it so there is a local host 725 and now we are you can see we are adding this is a controller product and the action is add i see this now this is going to get executed so let's see and there's an issue oh check it out now from here that's where the issue popped up let's restart because we want to see where the error is and hopefully you can see we have this information we are not actually concerned or much concerned with the information we want to talk about the exception because we have an sql exception and remember this one was customized text we did that you and i check here your middleware sql exception so it means we are having 547 foreign key constraint violation let's see whether we can find that so sql exception that's great and the insert statement conflicted foreign key constraint the statement has been terminated so you can see that we have the exception down here right and that's amazing so if you want to um trace it we have it here that i can just use a stack trace and etc and now this is where the response it takes the it took this time and it was 409 conflicted watch here 409 conflicted so you see we are having everything every information which is necessary um for us to read what is going on in your system using this log okay so if i close this let's try to access the file to and see same oh yeah now we have it so there is a file so this is going to have every day every minute second millisecond <laughs> yeah because see there's no nanoseconds here so you have a millisecond you have a second minute and hour right so every millisecond you can as soon as you make a call you're going to have it here app is building app is running oh yeah they are doing they're doing the magic this is the first one second one starting from here then you can see we make a call it's the same thing as we saw in there that is a product where is it 
an exception saving this for key constraint we have it in here we made a call to the ace product controller add product and that is the sql query uh, to have an exception you can see from here we have the right here that is our this is the time it took we have the same response status oh yeah so we are done integrating our login now let's go and see how we can also add um cost cost stands for cross origin resource sharing cross origin resource sharing which allows the server to share its resources with clients for now we are not having client but in case in the future if you want to have clients communicate with this then core is very important we don't want to get in there before we come back and integrate this core so we need to make it over here i want to make sure that it's complete and it works now the sense we do not know the client who is going to consume this we can actually put in any client at all and later on when we add client and we get a port or we can even configure the port that we have set up here to the client anyone is going to work so how do we do that you can quickly do it in the program.cs file so let's add this magic so for now you can see we are not having any the um port or the address for this server here it is localhost https whoa then we have our localhost the port is 7025 so maybe you want to allow this for now maybe you can make it 26 this 26 is going to be for the client so the server is listening on this port. As soon as this port make a request, it's going to allow. But in case there's nothing like a port, a, a client with this port, then it's going to reject it. Or we can also remove this. And for now, let's say allow any origin. We can also set this. So that this becomes open to everyone. The last one allow credential so we can pass in a token which is yet to be created or added so once you have the default code we're going to add it so app dot use cost and we are good The next thing that we're going to do here is to add authentication. We want to focus on two rules, administrator and our user. User is a client and you have an admin. It's an admin. <laughs> These are the managers, right? So here, yeah, um, after we are done creating an account, admin can log in and also add other people as um, admin. You can change a role to an admin. Because our system is going to be in such a way that the first person to get into the system becomes an admin. The subsequent registrant becomes what? Users. So if um, admin wants to change the role, the first thing is the first, that person must be raised as an, as, um, with the role of user. Then admin cannot change the role to admin. I believe it making sense, right? There are many use cases that you can use this. You can just go ahead and maybe provide admin can add a user straight and now select row. It also possible, you can also do that. But with this, since this system is going to be open for general public and everybody can have access to it, hopefully before you make a payment, you need to register. So within that, I think the registration must, must be open for even an external out there, not even for the admin. But for people who want to also buy things in our system so let's do this the first thing that we need to do here is to install our packages now we're going to be using identity manager so it means we need to install and we're also going to extend the identity user class and maybe add full name to it to support full name so we can do that in a domain i'm going to unload that
and I believe as soon as I unload it, you know what I'm going to do, isn't it? <laughs> yes, I'm going to add package in there. So it tells you that you're going to install this package microsoft.extensions.identity.stores install this so we can extend the app user okay now what do you do again restore with dependencies because now we have an item group added and the package reference so we want to make sure we include that the next thing to do is let's go to the infrastructure and also do same in there but while well, you can also install them i believe you like that you want to install them you want to use this <laughs> anyone it's cool so i'll just right click and also i'll unload project again never mind i'm going to unload this project a couple of times so don't worry it is safe <laughs> let's um add our uw authentication in it that is the first thing to talk about, which gives you access to JWT service. Aside from this, we're going to be using uh, some service in it. And we need an abstraction. Although we're not having this abstraction here, yeah, we have an abstraction. We need our identity um, framework call. So let's also grab it. So these are going to be used for authentication. That's the reason why I'm separating them, as you can see from here. Aside from that, we need identity UI so we can specify our sign in and also our email confirmation. Hopefully, later we're going to integrate email confirmation. And also, we need to have our Microsoft MVC.call. Maybe we want to add from details. Well, we can save that for now because this also works. If we want to get to a time where we're going to integrate in the clients, we have to make sure it sync with the server. Why oh, it will? <laughs> yeah, it's well. Then we have configuration dot abstraction because we're going to be using iconfig. So hopefully, let's use that. And that is all. So these are the packages that you need. So four packages. Pause the video. Get them installed one after the another. Are you done? Let's reload it as usual. Oh yeah. You get mine? Let's go and check dependencies, packages. I'm waiting to see this off, off, off. From, from now I have three off, three issues here. Well, are they going? Yeah, they are gone. It means they are good. Okay. Let's go and add a service. So we're going to add our um, um, default identity. And now within that, we need um, an app user. So this tells us that we need to create an app user here. Now I'm giving the name an app user. It could be application user. It could be context user, whatever it is. You can give it any, any meaningful name. This should be done in the domain. Why is it? Entity, I have my entities here, I have my applications, I can add another one. Maybe with this I can add a folder to organize this. I say identity. Then I'm gonna say this is app user. This should be public as usual. And I wanna have just only one property attached to this, which is string. And I'm going to say this is full name. Maybe if, if this is the first time of you watching this, because normally my videos, I want to also include the, uh, newbies, those who are watching the video for the first time, who have no knowledge in .NET. Now, what is nice, you want to use an identity manager. It has an inbuilt properties attached to an identity user. So if I click on this um, identity user, this class has properties such as username, email, pick definition, and now testify yourself. 
the knots here, rather, this. So we can say TAS and ID. Aside from that, it has username, it has email, it has password. You see? So all phone number. So all these properties are there. They are there except full name. <laughs> that is the reason why I am adding full name here because I want to take in the full name so that if clients log in, I did not to display, hey, your email, welcome. I want to grab, hey, net code, welcome. Hey, your name, welcome right so that's the reason why i am adding this uh we can decide to skip it if you hate it <laughs> but i believe you love that okay so now that we have the full name let's go to our program and i'll do the magic that a service container and that program so it is going to be services dot add default identity takes in an app user class that we created So here you want to only require confirmed email. If you want to confirm an email, that is over here. If you want to confirm um, phone number two, it's here. That's how you can generate. You can connect this to the OTP service so they can send an echo to the phone. SMS, you can retrieve it. But here you want to use email. So as soon as you provide your email, you want to send a message to the email. Then quickly want to grab it from there. So we say signing that required confirmed email service through. Aside from that, you want to make it in a form of a token that you can go in there, grab it, and paste it. It's much more easier for client to use that than giving them a link to click. So normally, I want to use token base. Now, the token base, you can configure that from options or token base. You get it? Dot email confirmation token provider. Then we say this is token options you see that token oh i'm not going to mine do you have yours yes i have it here token options so yes dot default you have a lot this is default email provider then let's have an options that's password dot required now for password required to get set it through you want to have it at least eight option dot password dot required um, alphanumeric special characters through options dot password dot required length length should be minimum is eight I think it's six default options dot password you want to require uppercase oh yes it's quite important you want to make sure our password is secure authentic uh, nobody can just guess it anyhow not even brute force <laughs> so we say options that password that's required now we have lowercase it means we have to go in for an uppercase set so this is true and again we are not done yet option dot password dot do you have any other? <laughs> that is all. So you can see we have a lowercase, uppercase, digit, uppercase. Oh, no. We have a lowercase, uppercase, lowercase, length, numeric alphabet, and numeric. Then we have a quad digit. Oh, that's great. That's great. That's great. So you can see we are done here. We can get rid because we don't have any. <laughs> okay, so required unique characters. We forgot that. Let's set this to two. That's the special characters. Although we're going to enforce this. Okay. So you can see from here. Now this is integer. So how many unique characters do you want to enforce? Now let's check it out. So you can see get or set the minimum number of unique characters. Which password must contain. Default is set to 1. So default is 1. So if you do not even provide this. Default is 1. But guess what? You want to still maintain the one okay let's bring it in there so that we can be sure that oh well i am implementing this 
rather than relying on this one because you could get your problem one day <laughs> also so let's save this now the next thing i'm going to do here is also quite simple let's add the row because you're going to be adding rows i'm talking about user and manager so here we're going to say dot add row and here it is not row manager rather row and here we are not extending the row identity okay you want to also maintain that so we're going to use identity row just like that the default one then let's add entity framework whereby we need to pass in our app db context because it needs that to work and as soon as you do this it is not like you're done you're not done we need to go to our settings and do something in there <laughs> this is a magic but for now we're going to maintain that later on we're going to do that now that we are done here let's add our jwt so services dot add authentication Now I hate I hate having this multiple time. Ah, this is what I'm gonna do. And change it to default scheme. But it's the same. Change it to default challenge scheme. Oh, copy and paste at times is sweet. Nice do it. Let's add the bot itself. Alright, so we have this configured. Now we see from here we want to save the token, also specify these parameters when generating the token and also when validating this token. We want to validate the audience and the issuer. The issuer it is the server itself, the audience is whom the token is meant for. It is not the client, it is the same server <laughs> because it's going to validate it. We have validate lifetime, set it true so we can see whether the token has expired or not. We also have required expiration time, we set it through and validate issue assigning key. So the special key that you're going to use, we want to make sure it is included in the token. And also you want to get the valid issuer. We, here we're going to find it from the absetting. So a session as a JWT and a subsession as an issuer. Same thing applies to this. We want to grab our um, issue assigning key and then that we get that key from here. Okay. We set our class um, class queue so that the time between the server and the clients it's the same. We don't want to increase it. We don't want to put an extra. Or even if they're not the same, we want to make sure we have set the same limit. Okay, so we have our configured this is our JWT configuration service configured nicely. So the next to do here is we need to go in and start implementing our interface and repos let's go to solution application and create our repos in the interfaces so in the application we have an interfaces in here we have this one application or that should be in the domain we have an interface great now this interface we have an i generic so we're going to add maybe an authentication folder and uh, add all in there you can make it authentication or identity
okay so let's have three interfaces here first one is going to need an iro manager i token manager and our user manager we group them so we can have each work user manager focuses on creating a user finding the user all about user token is all about token row is all about user role okay we don't want to say manager because you have manager already in there original one so we don't want to have any um, type of it. We want to say management. <laughs> Let's twist a little bit. Management. Let's make this as public. Let's duplicate this. And you're not saying I row, I user. Token. Now for this, there's going to be a task. It's going to return string. String could be null. So you say get user row. All that you to do here is to pass in the user email address. We need one more, which is task could be boolean and that is add user to row. So this needs an app user. And now the row name. Now we're done with that. Let's go to the user management. Now with the user management, we want to have a task which returns a boolean and in here we're going to say create user. You can add the async, 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 async because I know I hate adding async all the time. <laughs> so it takes an app user, then we have another task of boolean and it's not an app, it is not, it's login user, we takes in same app user and our user we also have another one it's the same task which is app user and this could be now and now here we're going to say that get user by email so we're going to have string yeah email then we have another one task same app user and this app user, this should not be now. <laughs> the first one can be now, but the second one cannot be now, depending on the context that we're using it. We're going to make sure that before we call the second one, user is already existing. Okay, so that is a get user by ID. So, ID. And that's going to return the user. So from that, you want to have an i enumerable. Now this enumerable is going to be app user. This could also be now. This now should come here. Get all users. Then we have task which returns integer remove user by email let's pass in our email nicely then last one we want to grab a list of claim from the specific user this and we say get user claims passing only the email that is what we need so these are the interfaces that we need sounds many too long many or what do you think about this short short interfaces <laughs> then let's go to the token this is about token management so if i say token management do you get it now let's have our this is going to just return 
get a fresh token because you're taking the spite you want to get a new token and we're gonna have this gonna return list of same claim and now with this claim it is get user claims now this get user claims we want to get it from not the um, database or the user manager rather from token so we have two things uh, make sure you do not confuse yourself with it there is getting the claims from the token and the one is getting the token the, the claims from the db okay this one is let's have our task this is going to return true i'm going to say validate refresh token and now let's pass the refresh token the next one is returns an integer i think this should be string instead then get user id by a fresh token so you want to extract an id from the refresh token that is coming in but means we're going to save the refresh token so we're going to save it in conjunction with the user's id so when you have the token refresh token you can just go to the db and then grab the id that is what this method is going to do and also you want to add add refresh token and now this needs two things user id now refresh token i believe this interface has made you understand this one right we're going to save it so we're going to have user id and now you want to get user id by the token that we're going to provide and let's have two more <laughs> you know i have an update you know we want to follow the solid principle a single responsibility for each function so we don't want to make two or more if not you can combine some of them to make it two three four five well we don't want to do that we don't want to violate that rule so this principle says that each function must have only one one reason to change Okay, so it's, it's, it should have a single responsibility. So let's follow that. That's a good way of programming. So this is an update. We will to update that. I'll tell you the reason why when you get there. So don't worry if you don't understand this. Don't worry, you understand it soon. But I believe this is important for you to understand. And I believe you've you know it already. Now the last one here is let's generate the the main thing here, <laughs> generate the token. And now this token we pass in list of claim, which is gonna come from the user management. We have claims. This is our interface that we need. We can separate them into a separate file. Okay, let's go do the implementation. So with this, we need a user manager to inject it. And also this should have the IRO management as an interface. And that is where we need to implement our two interfaces, add user to row and now get user row. That is all that is gonna do. So we can say that results, and this is gonna return um, just boolean. So we can use this Lambda expression 
it's difficult to debug with this but if you have a simple method that you know that for sure is going to work then lambda is good <laughs> you want to return this await user manager dot add row async and now with this you want to provide this user and add the row name this should return succeed right so maybe let's see if we can get the succeed from here this success is a boolean tax could be true could be false if this is performed successfully so you want to return that also let's get user so we can grab the user first so find by email let's specify the email when we get it we want to return should be an await then we have a user manager dot get rows now you know with get rows returns a list but we haven't a single row for this user right so we want to say that this row you want to grab that first or default let's make this nullable although this won't be null but well let's make it nullable we are done implementing this let's go to the other one so we can put it here so we can put it in the file yeah, so this is class i user man management no this is not i user management this is rather user management and it inherit from i user management right let's implement the interfaces here so with this we need to inject our row manager that we just created so it's going to depend on that so I row manager row management and aside from that we need our user manager app user user manager then we need our app db context then db context let's say this is context so we need three dependencies okay so once we have this let's go ahead and our first create user we have the user already so we're going to say that this user is equal to await get user by email but we're not having this get user by email so it tells you that we need to create that first because you want to just find a common class here and we have a method that is get user by email so we can go ahead send is going to return now it tells you that yeah this could be now it could be that user is not found or not found so user manager dot find user by email and that is what this method is going to do the email now same thing applies to the id so now let's go and grab this So it is saying that here it could be now, although it, it, it won't be now because from where we're going to use it, it won't be now. But we're already saying that we should make it now. So, in order to get rid of that, we can say this is user. And then return user to get of that uh, sign <laughs> okay so let's uh, get await get user by email 
Wie sah das? E-Mail. Now we're getting the user. So we're going to say that a user is not equal to now. If user is not equal to now, the reason is we are going to create. So we don't want to create a user once it exists. <laughs> Duplicate. Oh, it's wrong. It's bad. Just return. This is going to be a boolean. So here it is false. Else, we want to create this. So we say that this is the result that we are having. Now with this result, we want to create it. So maybe we can just, this could be in a, just a single line. We can say that return await, but this should be in bracket. So return await user manager dot create async is passing this user and also the password the, the password and now here yeah, they're going to create it so dot succeed you want to return this I'll be saying this should be now but well this won't be now Okay, now it is leaving us an issue. Use explicit var. Well, it's also fine. <laughs> or use local one. So that is get. We have get all users. So with get all users, what can we do from here? We can just go ahead and return the whole user the list. So let's also use lambda to handle. We don't want to use user manager because you cannot get a list from there. We can use context dot users You have the user soon, don't worry. Dot two list async and here this you use anti framework call. Uh core, EF core, EF core app db context. Okay, we come back and rectify that. Never mind. So we have the users got. We haven't used room management, right? We will use that. Don't worry. Now we get user by ID. So this get user by ID. What can we do? We want to. Okay, we have it already. Get user claim. That is what I'm talking about. <laughs> so get user claims. We are going to return a list of claims. So here. We take in the email and now with this email we're gonna say that var user this user is equal to await. Let's call this internal method to get user by email. This email. So once we have this, we can check for the row. Okay. Then we're going to say that await row management dot get user row. Now with this get user row, all that's going to do here is we're going to pass in this user dot email because we need user email to get row. After we have this row, we want to Create it because we have everything. So let's start doing some magic. So we're gonna say that list of claims. We say claims is equal to. So instead of having new, we want to use this array, and in that let's have new claim. First one is full name. Do you remember? Now with this full name, it is coming from user that full name. Aside from that, we have another one. New claim. And now with this claim, we're having claim types dot name identifier 
that is the ID. So it is user dot ID. We have another one. New claim claim types dot email. And here we're going to say that user dot email. And lastly, let's have the rule. So that is the rule name that we have. Okay. So once we have this, we can go ahead and return. Okay, so we have our method all implemented, isn't it? Oh, great. Okay. So we have our last method. Okay, so we did not use. All right, so we have login. We have um, remove user. We forgot that and that is coming from um, user management oh okay it means we need to work on that okay so let's go to the login let's get user So here is what you're doing. You want to first, before user logs in, you want to grab the user email, check whether it's in the system. Then in case it is the password or the username is there, you want to check the password, isn't it? But first, you want to check if a user has a role. If the user has a role. So we don't want an user to log in without having a role. So here it is a, like a validation that we're doing. We can do this in the application or we can do it here. But this is the stages that we go through for a user to get login. We first get the user by ID, we check the user role, and then we check the password. So it's all about check, 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 right? So three checks get you in. So we also check in the password. We pass in the user. Now when it comes here, because you're going to find the user here. So we can use this user or that. And we need to provide the current password the user is passing on. So we can check if it corresponds or it syncs with what we have already. And it's going to return true or false. Check it up. So we're going to return the answer here. Now in case I want to remove user, I have to go through it, make a search from the user, and I'll get it off. So let's first get user and this method is also to remove it now this method returns save async changes returns an id returns a tax um, a result of integer so we can also return to see if user remover works. Now let's implement the last one. And that will be you have the user management, that is a token management. So let's have our method down here.
So what we're going to do next here is implement our token manager. So we need to create um, a model which will be used to save it, which contains three properties, maybe um, GUID as an ID, user ID, and add a token, refresh token itself. So we go to the domain and in identity, let's add a class in there. So add a class known as refresh token, and we have the ID, a username, and add the token. Now in that, let's go to the AppDB context and register this or create a DB set for it, which is going to be a table to store that. Now that we are done, we come to our refresh token and in here, let's go and add this. So we're going to say that context, we need to ingest DB context. And also we're going to need an I configuration. Now we're just coming from say config. So context dot refresh token, we should have it here. So after that, we're going to return. This is going to return I am um, integer. If it's success, we're going to have it. If it is not. We also have that. Now let's go to um, generate token. So in generate token, let's see what we can do. Let's first get our key from the app setting. So new symmetrical. What we did, um, symmetric security key. What we did in the uh, registration, we're going to do the same here. I'm going to say encoding. encoding.utf8 now with the encoding she come from system.test dot utf8 dot get bytes and on here we just get byte we have a config then this is JWT and the key. So you can also use I options to handle um, this. We are not doing that today. <laughs> okay, now let's. So this is our key. We have our key stored. Let's create our credential. So credential is got to new sign in credential. We specify our key, then we specify the security algorithms HMAC256. Then let's go and set expiration to our token daytime dot utc now dot add hours. And you want to make it two hours. Now that we have all this, let's go and create our token. So you're going to say that the token that we have, they call to new JWT security token. In that, we need to specify um, issuer, and issuer is going to be config, then JWT issuer aside from that we can have audience it is the same config and here we're gonna have the wt audience let's have our claims so we have our claims and claims here since we have it already we're going to provide a claims in it then we have aspiration we set that to that is aspires we set this to aspiration that we have created and then lastly signing credentials we set this to the credential that we have created okay now let's return new jwt security 
token handler name generated security token handler dot write token so write token pass in the token that we have created to return a token in the form of string yes so we have a token created so this is a method to return token okay now let's create and the next method is what refresh token so let's just return 64 bytes of a random generator string which will return to be 64 string so let's have a constant and this constant we don't have a byte that you want to create byte size you can increase increase this from 32 64 64 then you're gonna have a byte then have random um bytes so you call to new byte then with this byte pass in this byte size so now you have a 64 byte then let's use random number generator to get that so using random number generator is equal to random number generator dot create then in that we want to add number generator dot get bytes let's pass in a random byte okay now we have so let's convert it to base to four string so return hundred dot to base 64 string we need a string pass in this random number by pass in this So with get user ID from token, we can get it from the database and straight you can see from here we want to access the fresh token and I'm passing the user ID and I return it. That is what we are doing here. Okay. We should use an EF call. The next one to do here is we want to update in case I want to update this. Then we want to populate this. We can get the user details from here. Could we create an instance of this refresh token? And now with this refresh token model that we created, it is coming from domain.entities. Then we can have refresh token. So dot identity, that is where this is coming from. So maybe we can remove all this and I include it as a reference, which is already done. And in that we're having our We have in the user ID already. So here we have an email that means we have to get. Now this is an update. I think this is a paste in the wrong choice. That is why times copy and paste can give you an issue. <laughs> it should be an update refresh token. So with this update, we have a user ID. We have a refresh token already in here. We create a model out of it. Then we get from database. And maybe this is what we can do. In case um, you can get it from the database from here, get the user first. Maybe since you're doing an update, I think we can even get rid of this model. We don't want to update the model straight, we want to just update the property in the model. So we're going to set here as an async, and then we get from database where this we have the token. When we return it, when we get it, set the token to this refresh token, the current one, and I'll save changes. Now let's go and add. So in add, that is where we need to provide the model. And now we save changes. So add. Now this is update. So aside from update, we have add refresh token. Where right? there's an add. So we are adding it already. And we have it. So you can see we are adding and now we are updating. 
now we have get user claims from token so the token that is going to come in here that is going to get the user claims from and i believe here should should it should this one should be token not email i think we need to create this because if we want to grab the claims here from the token and in order for us to do it we need to get the gwt security token handler we need to read tokens and in that we can extract the claim from it we commit it to a list and i return else we want to return now okay that's an um, empty array so it means that we need to change here get user claim from token we need to change this token manager so get user claim from token this should be the token not an email okay and the last method that we have is to validate the refresh token we want to check make sure that the refresh token does exist in the database and then that we can use a simple um search to get it so because you're using first or default and in that we are checking in case it is found we're going to return if visa is not now so return a boolean true or false in case visa is found okay and we have this also implemented so the next thing to do here is we're going to orchestrate all these um, um interfaces through the service and let's see how we're going to go about that so first make sure you build this and also we need to change from our db set instead of the identity db context we can use maybe for you to get it well let's there's a normal stuff and here we create constructor to inject this so we create constructor and now in here instead of this we're going to be using identity db so identity db context and in that we need to specify our app user this should come from the namespace of using um, identity ef core okay so we can also go ahead and implement the um primary constructor control period and you can see that we have implement primary constructor giving it the same way but well i really like using the old one because it's clear understandable all right so now that we have this we need to register our service in the program.cs file so go to not the service container go to your service container and in there we need to register all the services so services dot add scope then we're going to create this three times so we need our user management so this is user management then let's include we need same for i token management token management the last one okay so we can go to our um extracts all this to separate files token so when we check authentication we have um that is a row token and our user manager but that's a management okay so let's go ahead and create our service so let's go to application in the interface i'm going to create a service so maybe i can add authentication or i could be a service for that Now, in this interface, we need three um, interfaces create user, login user, and a revive token. And that's going to be for refresh token. When token expires, you want to revive it, you want to keep it alive. So, we need to make sure we get um, a refresh token. This call will be made by the UI, the client. So, but for now, we have to implement it so we can allow the client to do it. Now we need a login response. So let's see from here. We need, we need to also create create user DTO and also login user. 
and then we have a login response do we have login response here no we don't now the difference between um create user response and login response you know with this service response that we created previously it has two properties it's a record and these properties are this flag success and also a message but the login response it goes beyond this you can see we are going to have a refresh token and our token maybe we're going to have a message aside and our state so we need to create that response so let's grab that and in the dto's dto's we have a response we can also add well we can also add this here so this is, an, this is a class and like login response now in this login response maybe we can have um we can also make it a record isn't it yeah so you can make it record then within that record we can specify some properties that we do need such as maybe um message token and a refresh token let's get this done so let me just make this as public and here we are having um success message token and a refresh token so that is our login response you can see here you're going to return um four properties it's going to have a value but you can see we have a default value set to each so we can decide to skip some of them and i'll pass value to specific ones now we need to create a user account now you know when you go to the app user when you go to our interface app user has email username full name phone number and etc but you want to focus on maybe full name email password okay for now this is what you we need in this um, e-commerce project so let's copy this let's go to our dto's now dto's i'm going to add a folder here and this is going to be identity it could be authentication it could be identity it could be anything at all now in here let's add a class and this class we're going to name it as create user now with this create user what are some of the properties as mentioned earlier do we need since we're going to have a base class because login and also create we're going to have with just some of the uh, the same properties so i suggest we put let's say this is a class and i said this is base model now this base model let's have full name and uh maybe email address i think so isn't it so let's have email and uh, we have string that is password okay so maybe we can use the required keyword to make sure that this is required okay we have this base address set now aside from that we can also specify we have a create user so let's do let's implement inheritance so let's have a base model now this model has email and password now for create we want to make it required string and let's say this is confirm oh i want to say confirm email <laughs> confirm password we have email and confirm password and here we're gonna have full name as well so let's it's a string and let's say pass in your full name make this as required okay let's create a login so for our login it's gonna be public class that is login user and add this inheriting from the same base model and that is all because here we need email and password that is what we need for the login email and password only when you come to create user we need email password full name and confirm password so we got them okay let's extract this into separate classes so move this and move this as well great oh are you there it's still there let's see let's put it again go yes it's gone now so when you check your identity you can see we have all these three and when you go to the in services it means we need to make reference and use them here great let's create our service our implementation for that so in here we go to and add and also add annotation 
then let's add class for that now with authentication service that we have it's going to be public as usual and at the end you know they should inherit our authentication service and with this we need to implement include the reference and implement the other interfaces okay so we have create login and our revive token let's get this straight so we need to inject our i authentication service i authentication and here it is not just i authentication oh it is i token management we say token management we have i user management we say user management we say i row management we say row management so we have this injected nicely and maybe we can log message here so let's have i app logger yeah it's gonna be authentication service and we say logger before we can proceed working on this we need to validate the model so i prefer in the previous one we use a default as a microsoft default validation model that is using the attribute required uh, denied and, and a lot email address and etc but well, let's also use another way of validating so that you know the two way you can choose any of them okay now let's use fluent validation to validate the specific models so let's we need to install the package so let's do that and also it's not only fluent validation we're also going to introduce mapping so we're going to also map models we cannot do that manually although it's not a big project that we do not have um, large properties of models but just few but still it's good to use auto mapper to just get that to tidy up your system okay instead of you writing a lot of code to do that you can use the auto mapper just one line you can map it and straightforward that's amazing so i suggest so i suggest to you that you use it often even in some applications okay so as usual i'll have to unload my project so let me save everything So I'm not saying you to unload yours, but if you want to unload it, fine. But you can just go in there and install. You see, we have auto mapper here already. So we are going to install this fluent. So these two packages, to fluent validation and our validation the ASP.NET core. Install these packages. Let's go and reload project with dependencies. Okay. So we have them. So we see in the previous video, we'll be able to map it. We we'll use the auto mapper as well. And today, we're going to also use the same auto mapper. So it tells you that after we have done this in authentication service, we cannot skip auto mapper. We need it. So I mapper. And we say this is mapper. Okay. Aside from that, once we have this package installed, we need to create our validation to handle this. How do we do it? let's create a folder and name it as validations now on these validations what else can we do here let's go in for organization so i'm going to say what i'm going to do here is about authentication and yes of course it is so under that we need to create a model create user validation and also login user validation so create user validator and also aside from having this uh, validator we're also going to make a copy of this and i create login user so all that i'm going to do here is to change it to login it should be public and i believe you know this let's copy this you can paste it up here amazing let's remove unnecessary seasons streamline that okay 
Now in this case validator, what else can we do? We need to this needs to inherit from an abstractor. Uh, that's an abstract validator of create user. So this is a model, and we should inherit from that. So that's an abstract validator. This one passing the model. Very nice. Now we're going to do the same to this. And now the model here is what login user. Let's create a constructor for this. It's your R create a constructor. We're doing it together. It's your constructor. Now for the validator for create user, we want to specify this. Remember that the validation is to match with what we did. Now when you go to the program or the program solution, go to your service container. In your service container, where is it? In your service or in my service container, you can see that we said in identity we want to follow this. So it means our validation should also match with this synchronization. So let's without once you have this in mind, let's create a validation. Now we see from here we are having full name, we are having it as not empty. Um, with message, I have what is prepared beforehand, so you know to type them again. If not, time consuming is a factor. So um, pause the video and I'll do a small small to get it. Okay. <laughs> okay, so you have not empty, it shouldn't be empty. In case it is, then you know what is gonna happen. The same thing applies to email and yeah we are adding the email um here to make sure it is it has at symbol in it to check the format and also when it comes to the password here matters most you can see it's not empty and also the minimum should be eight and it should include alphabet capitals alphabet lower alphabet it should uh, it should have at least a number in it and also a special character <laughs> yes and lastly, this password is confirmed or should sync with this password. That's a confirmed password. Let's go and create one for the user. We can even tap uh, some from here and I'll paste it in there. For user, it's quite simple. Once you have a constructor created, we need only two. We don't want to, we don't want to um, enforce this password validation because if we do that, then if it's an anonymous person, a hacker, then the hacker might know the pattern of the password okay we don't want all that we're going to do here is password is required we provide wrong password we say that invite credential and that is all so do not never do this again in here don't expose yourself do not expose your system make it in this way when you're creating a, when you're creating a user account that is where you need this but when logging in hey never do that where we can check for valid um, email address but for password, all that you need here is password is required. And that is all. So once you have this, we can save this peacefully. Let's abstract this uh, to a class. So we have two validation classes. Login and I'll create user. So once you have this, what else can we do? The next thing to do here is to enforce this validation. We need to register this first in a program.c as well. Not the program service container. So once you have it in here, you know. Validation is happening in the application, so it means we need to go in for the service container in that. And that is where we need to add our service. So in here, we're going to add Fluent Validation, and that's an auto validation. And also, we're going to add this. We are getting only one. You can see we have two created create user and login user. But here, what here? It is saying that add validators from assembly containing this. So as soon as you get this, the assembly that this contains, that is where we have all the validations, isn't it? In case you have the validations in different assemblies, that is where you need to also register that. But since we have all of them in one assembly, this is going to make it work. And it's going to get all. Okay. Now, what else can we do again? Let's go to our authentication service. And here we need to validate this. So in this service, let's add I validation service so maybe we have um the validator for create user and also login user so we need to also add that we can talk about i validator do you see yours oh i'm not seeing mine i yes that is this one by data and here we need a create user that is our model and in that we say this is create user by data and also we have 
i validator um login user and we say login user validator so we have also this included right amazing but you know the reason why we're going to do here is uh, we're gonna, the next thing to do is uh, which one you know here you less don't worry when we get that i'll tell you <laughs> the next thing to do so in the create user first of all let's handle validation so we can say that var validation validation yes equal to we're gonna have a wait create user create validate dot validate so validate we need to pass in this user okay now here create user validation we pass in this user because it needs create user but it is not all after we have this we need to this should be a validate async because since you have an await to be validate async now this is going to return a result it could be success or it could not be um, successful so let's have if this validation result not now dot success so we want to check is validation that is this one dot is valid dot is valid so you want to negate it and make sure if it isn't then what are we going to do then we need to extract the errors and our return so in that we need to grab errors is equal to this validation result that we have in here that is this validation so dot then we can have errors dot select you see so select this you need to pass in e dot error message and we want to convert them to a list you see so the same thing applies to when you go to the login we're going to have the same thing so here we can create a simple class under that you see we don't want to repeat it you want to follow dry do not repeat yourself if it is possible do not repeat yourself so let's scrap all this don't worry <laughs> we're scrapping this and we're going to create an interface for that it's the same validation so in the validation class that we created this can be used for all validation that you're going to work on validation authentication and in here this won't be only for authentication rather so let's put it in the base folder and i'm going to say this is i validation service now with this i validation service what can we do here we can have a single method which is going to be generic and this is going to return service response okay service response has um property of success and a message let's clear this let's streamline this then you know that this is public and you also know that this is what interface now let's create implementation for that so we have our public and that is our class and we say this is validation service which inherit from i validation service which takes in t and as soon as it takes in t it tells you that this also will take in t <laughs> let's implement the interface so control period let's see if you're gonna have access to i validation service is it the same yes it's the same all right so okay so there's no t here so why oh i thought it's here <laughs> all right so let's implement this and now we have this so here what can we do so what we were doing that we scrapped off let's go and bring it back so i have it at hand let me just get it here oh we have to make a duplicate that actually that is one of the way issues that you face if you like copy 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 <laughs> okay so i have it in here you can see that we have the method implemented and that is a class which inherit from the interface this interface and in there we are saying that validate this result this model is t model it means a generic then we want to check if it is not valid then get a response and now 
um, join them retain the form of an array so here we're going to use this so in a client if you want to access and display them one after the another it means you need to split it using this and convert them into less so we can have a separate validation errors then we're going to return but in case um, everything works then we'll just return only success you can actually pass the message uh, so they can use that in your service but what well, i think is necessary so let's put this in another class or another file now we have it so it means that once you're done with this we cannot skip registering we need to go in there and I register that so services dot add scoop we said this is i validation service and we have validation service you see validation is spelled wrongly i think you can make that change let's go back to the service and let's inject that so i validation service do i have the correct one here i don't it means i have to go back okay so we have all the tools that we need the apparatus that we need we have everything now we can go ahead and execute or perform our operations okay so in this what is the first thing that we need to do i told you earlier that we need to validate this user right so under validation this is what we can do let's grab and um, say that here validation results equal to validation server that we have validated passing this is a model and under validation itself that is this is the instance of the validator that we created for create user now in case it is not successful it's going to return what what here this returns service response and this returns service response so we can return this trade away but in case it is then what else can we do it means this is false no this is true success is true then what else can we do we're going there to map our model so let's go and map it now in order of mapping you know we are mapping our app user to a create user no mapping create user to app user yeah vice versa now you know app user has a lot of properties in it while um create user has few properties now it's going to match the equal property names and now the other one that they do not have the name um appeared in the other model is going to skip that so example is password hash is not found in the um create user so it means you have to map it ourselves after it has finished with the email and maybe the password so we do the email and we add the username because you don't have username property in the create user so we have to do it ourselves and map it in here after we are done mapping what else can we do we need to go ahead and execute our create action now in order to do it then this is what we're going to do we need to call our user manager so first of all we're going to create a user first so watch here we're creating the user create user we passing this map model and in case this is false you want to return email address might be already in use or unknown error or cat because when you check this it returns two states it could be false for the first time that is if the user exists or when creating the user there could be an issue which will return false so in this case we are we are adding these two issues together and i'm saying that email might be in use that is when the email is already in use or unknown error cat so we're having that we don't want to give an explicit information exactly what is going on because that could lead to some issue so actually try as much as possible to make your information return to the user very simple understandable and user based okay now the next thing i'm going to do here so you can decide to log in case you have an issue like that for you you can decide to log it but mostly this is going to work as soon as um mode is being mapped and everything is set this should work but well who knows you want to um check as well now the lesson is after we have this in success the lesson we're going to do here is going to assign the role to the user how do you assign this role the first person who gets registered should be an admin the subsequent ones are all going to be user 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 so we need to do that and in, in that we have this the i user management there to handle this issue for us so let's go ahead and i'll do that so under assigning role we want to say that user manager dot get user by email the user has been created from here so as soon as you call this you're going to get the email so we don't need to check it and it's also going to get a list because email has been added it has been added to a list you're going to have one then we are saying that in case this user account is greater than one it means user already exists it means you're having two or more then assign this current user as user 
but in case it is the first time or is equal to one then it means an admin because system is made in such a way that the first person who gets registered to the system is an admin subsequent ones are user but while you're gonna have you can have different scenarios in this okay so this is what i'm implementing and for now in our project you can modify this to suit what you want now with this we can check from this this is going to return what is going to return a uh, true or false so we can check in case it is false in case user a row is not able to assign they want to row back because this user has been added there is no row assigned to after adding the user we wanted to assign the row and it should occur so we did not able to assign the row then we want to row back we want to remove that user and make this user not existent in the system so in that we're going to check in case this is false it means row could not be assigned and we don't want anybody to be in the system whereby row is not assigned it doesn't have row no we don't want to do that so we're going to remove this user by email and i'm going to check it up but in case jerry remover it gets an error then you want to log this error okay so maybe user with email uh, failed to be removed as a result of um row assigning issue user could not be assigned row so we are logging this Okay, let me put this in new line so you can see. Oh, maybe this also. Great. So we are having all this. And um, we're going to return error occurred in creating, in creating account. So I think this is creating account. So this is going to log it. So in case here, if your developer goes to the log and check, you can see that this is a it's about to be removed, but there's an issue occurred. It means this is how we're able to assign a row, and it has been removed. The row was able to assign, and this is then supposed to be removed, but we couldn't. So we can now go ahead and tackle and fix it and see the reason why the user couldn't be removed. But mostly, it's it's about one percent. It's one out of ten. It's it won't, but well, it's good that we leave it there. But in case everything works, then who, who knows? The next thing we could do here is. We want to return, yeah, account created. But before account created, okay, after account is created, that is what we need to do. We want to send, so let's verify email. Okay, so the email that person has sent, we want to send a token to the email so that he can verify. And we are not doing this for now. Maybe later on, we're going to tackle how to verify the email let's keep that let's assume for now as soon as you create an account you have this created now let's go to the login now if the user wants to log in that is where we need to check authenticate the user and now generate a token for this user which includes all the claims that you have assigned talking about the role the name the id and the full name email as well so in a login user instead of here repeating what we did earlier on that we scrapped it off and i made the generic one which cater for all we can also do same in here but take note now this method returns login response not service response so it means we have to rewrite that and then prepare our login response this should be an async so what's here we validate it when we have the results we're going to check return login response then we specify only the message session equal to the message that we have this message could be a list it could be an array it could be a list um, of string which have been joined with semicolon. So in the client, we can split it and I'll get the list. But in case this also works, then we need to also map this. So let's map our model to the app user model because that is what we need in the implementation. And I'll specify the password hash externally. After we are done with that, we go ahead and I'll execute our function. That's the interface in the in our repo. And that is login user if it is false you want to return invalid credential we don't want to give us that message by invalid credential because your login should return true or false now in case you are true you are you are good then we want to populate the user claims so how do you get the claims you call this user manager service to get us the claims so you first get the user over there we're going to get it then we get all the claims from the user we have our claims here one of the claims the next thing to do here is to generate your token so how do you do it we have the token management created already so we call that and generate token we pass in the claims after we're done with that you know it also has um, a refresh token method 
which also returns the refresh token we also do that now that we have all these tools at hand we can go ahead and now save the refresh token and i'll return something else so here we're going to save it now under saving this refresh token to the table that we created in order for us to check when user is being calling for um refresh token we add the token to the database in here then we return this save token is going to return integer what's here so we check if it's less than equal to zero it means it couldn't save if there's an issue then return this so although we have the token generated by return so maybe in advanced scenario so you can we are not going to generate the token we're going to return only this one so it means although you've raised successfully but when trying to log in token could not be generated and therefore you're able to have the token so you cannot log in that's good you can prevent people from logging into system <laughs> yes but in case it is everything works then what we want to do here is oh, okay so we want to return the next line the token itself and a refresh token and set message as null for default so in case um it works then return this you can see you're using this standard operator okay to handle that all right so that is all we need to make your user log in and then get a token aside from that if i go in for revive token that is when the token is being a, a refresh token is being sent and the token expires and a refresh token is being sent how do we activate how do we get a new one first of all we want to validate if the token is real if the token is not tempered so you want to check to correspond if we have the same token in a database so once you get it once you have it we're going to in case it isn't they're going to say invalid token but once you have it then we're going to get the user id we can get the same user id from a method in there so get user id from the first token we pass the token and it's going to get a corresponding user id now let's create let's get also the user itself so once we have the email the user id we can get the user itself from here so we have the user id we have let's say we have the user everything is here we need to get the claims again from this now this time around we're not going to we can decide to get a claim from the database okay from your um identity manager but the token has claims already so you can also extract that so with these two ways choose one i am going to extract this claim from the token so you know to populate everything again going back and forth in the database i can just get it since i have the token uh i can get the user claims okay so here we get this user manager oh well wait user manager has what get user claims and this claims is getting from the not the token rather the um the identity manager because the token is a spy so we could not send the token to the api we sent only the refresh token so if i'm getting the claim from the refresh token it means we cannot get it because it wasn't part of the request that came in yeah that's great so we need to get from the system itself all right after we have the claims then go in there and i'll generate token and when you generate token do not keep the refresh token go and generate another refresh token so generate another refresh token and i want to another refresh token make sure you update it don't add it again because you have the same user information already so go and update it so we call this method to update the token and after updating return a login response and i return the new token with the refresh token for the user to store and add the token to the header and make another fresh request that is all that we could do in here great so we are done with that authentication service now we're going to register this service let's check and see if this service has been registered um, in our service container so let's do it here so services add scoop i authentication service let me say this is service now let's go ahead and create our controller we need to create a controller to use the service that we have created 
so let's go to our presentation layer so in here presentation layer controller we can add controller here the api empty and let's give it as authentication controller in that we need only two uh, three endpoints i'm sure four so we need three endpoints let me add one more and that's going to be refresh token now this refresh token we want to pass in um refresh token itself so here revive token and it should be string this is not post it should be get and we need to inject authentication service so instead of logging in nope let's revive revive token or it takes in refresh token and i'm just going to return results so we can return by the request or this so you can see instead of using um model state no we are having our own model validation so we're not using that and that is all let's run this and check it out if everything works yeah so the app is building let's wait and see in case there's any issue okay 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 app is running oh there's an issue here let's check it out the course protocol doesn't allow specifying a white card origin credential at the same time oh yeah so let's go and be specific in our origin so let's say origin less https local host 7025 let's assume this let's give it a shot Okay, so app is building, app is running. Let's wait and see if our swag is going to work. Oh, you should have an issue here. It is saying that. Oh, yeah. Yes, I got it. We don't have the key and all the service and the app setting location. Oh, yeah. But do you have yours? <laughs> I don't have mine. So that's the reason why I'm getting that error. So quickly, I'll just go to. Or uh, let us go to. The app settings and add our JWT section. So put in your secret key here. It must be secret to developers only. Yes, so we have 7025 for issuer. Now, this is authority and now home API token is made for to consume. So, which is the same API? So, this API that's what we're going to have this. Okay, so um, this is a simple description for you to understand. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so let's do this again. All right, so everything running, and I think everything is set and smooth. We might not have any error again. Oh yes, we do. So we don't have it. Now let's say for create. 
if i decide to click on this without pro provide the properties the accurate data let's see the errors oh yes email is invalid password might be and all the rest you can read it yourself now let's provide at least meaningful one this is um well let's say we have admin one that's admin dot com then we have admin at one two three whoa i think we need to add migration yes let me just delete the database that we have already i'm going to start everything afresh so that is an e-commerce app this so I want to clear through this existing connection. Then let's also remove this. Make sure default project set to infrastructure. Now let's add migration. Okay, update the database. If you not perform this, go to the program and uh, let's disable this. Again, okay, so migration is done already. Now let's go back and verify e commerce app tables. You must have one AS in the tables, and we have our refresh token table product or oh yeah we get them so let's bring it to life now let's hit it so it is ready now let's go and create account let's see in case we have this so let's show it either name I have an email as um, admin at admin I have password one two three so if I decide to make the password not up to 10 click on execute and we must have this exception I want to check this you see we have password must be at least eight characters long so let's bring them back and i'll hit on the enter now let's see yeah i could not create because missing type configuration oh yeah we did not configure the mapping so good solution and in a mapping folder you see we have a mapping config and here let's map the models so let's say create map and it is coming from create user and where is it going app user same applies to login so create map it is coming from login user and it is going to um, app user now let's give it another try okay so create let's see if i still have this now let's give it try and check it up ah, so email address might be already in use <laughs> so let's go and check it um asp.net users you can view data then rows you can also view data for rows okay so okay we don't have any role yet i think you don't have any user so there's, there's, there's an issue 
we have to perform seeding to get our rows as well. Maybe we need to do that because we don't want to create rows. So let's have a default row that's an admin and user. Let's make that happen in the AppDB context. So go to infrastructure and our um, AppDB context. Let's see it here. So use our model creating. And here we want to create identity row, passing an admin and now passing what? A user row. It tells us that we need to also do another migration. But let's go and take the reason why it is giving us user already exists, whilst user doesn't exist. We can go ahead, let's save this go to the solution let's go to the authentication service then in here we are checking if result is false create user if it's false that is where i want to return this yes it might be let's apply another migration Now let's see. So if I refresh my table, now go to ASNet rows. Let's see in case we do have. So still we don't have this. Command this. Now let's see. Yeah, so we see we have user and admin over here. I think this is working. And from users to we have no user currently. Again, we have no user. Let's run this and check it out. I think we need to go back and add that. So let's try to log in. No, create an account. Do we still have? No, we don't have. So we need to create our own. Okay, so we still have this. Now we're going to map it. So let's go and check. So we're going to start from our service. Um, where is our service? Because when you check our users, it seems we don't have any registered user. Okay, so let's have from this service, let's put a breakpoint and let's carry on and check it out. So click on execute. This is hit. Let's step out. Validation is true. Now map data and um, password also. So when we click on map model, we need to have email, full name, password, then username. Okay, now I'm going to create user. So let's click on um, user manager. So go to our repo, then in here, put breakpoint, step out, hit. Now here we're going to get um, user. Now let's see. Now user is now, right? So we're checking if it's not a return force. Else, you want to create this user. And I'm passing this password and I return the success. So this is I see here. Okay, I said if the is not equal to now. But this is a two. Okay, okay, okay. So here we want to get the user. 
this is null and if user is not equal to null return false now this is null and it's returning let's see a way to fix that I'm sure because of this now this has a default value set already so let's change this to var right now let's go back let's grab this and let's run this again let's go and create account again now that is hit click on continue on this is hit now check it up so you want to get the user let's see all right now the user here is now and this is now so we are looking up for this oh it is going to force it means we need to check this get user by email this method oh okay i get it i believe you saw that right this is user now it's here so this simple underscore is giving another issue <laughs> Okay, so I think that is solved now. So we can rerun this again. So now this should work now. Let's see, you have a breakpoint hit. So execute this, execute this, mess, map, 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 create. Now, watch it. This is, this is now. We'll go to the next line. Next line, now return create. Yes, and it's success. So check it up. Account created. Now let's go and verify from my table. User. So we have this in here, right? Go to the user row. ESPNet user row view data check it up so it has been assigned as what the row id here it is six and now we have only one user so that is nine and assigned row id of six now let's check the row id the row id is around asp.net row row id of six is what that is what you want to look up for let's go for the user the admin row id of six this one so we see we have an admin let's create another user and see what that's going to be assigned to f that is a user so um let's have another one maybe this is admin let me just ask user 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 now let's hit on the enter key and now let's execute this this and we should get user created now let's go and verify from the user row now we have looking for the other one of f so user id we're looking for the next user id of 9 that is 12 and now we have f so row id 6 is the admin and now there's f right you can see that the first user is admin second one or subsequent ones uh, what user okay now let's go in there and log in and check it out. So we're going to log in by the two and see the rows and the claims for each. We go to our login. And in here, let's first log in as an admin. So this is admin at admin.com. Then password is admin at one, two, three. Now let's execute. And let's see. So we have a token, we have our fresh token, right? Now let's grab this token, let's verify whether we have all these claims. And if you want to verify your token, you can go to jwt.io to verify that. So jwt.io. Now let's paste in our token here. And now watch it up. Full name is there. We have our identifier, that is the user ID, that is the email address, that is uh, the row is admin. There's the expiry date, the issuer, 702. 
let's go and log in as um, user2 and I'll get a row. So user, user, execute this. Let's grab sim to this, grab it, come, paste it. Now the user is user, the same name, different email, and now there's a validation um, time or period. Let's test for refresh token also. As soon as we pass in this token, we must have a new token. So let's see. So this is for the admin. What's here? I'm logging in with an admin at um, admin. So there's an admin. And let's go to revive token, pass in this refresh token here. Yeah. Now let's make sure we execute it. And now we need to return because we are having this invalid token. Why? Let's check it again. There is a token and let's paste it, execute. Then we still have this invalid token. So let's go and check it up. Let's go to solution and now to Okay, let's first check it here. From a database and e commerce app tables. And you want to locate refresh table. That's a refresh token table. And that is this. So we have here, this is the user ID and that is a various tokens. And expand this. So user ID here. And that is a token. So we have in this user ID. Now let's say for admin user ID. And this one is for admin. So this admin, the user ID ends with C9. So C9, that is this one, C9. And we also have another C9 here, isn't it? 2A, C, 5A, is the same thing. We are having two tokens here. So which one should we go for? It means there's an issue with our token, save token. Let's go and rectify that. So from the service um, implementation authentication service, where we log in. So when we log in from here, if it's successful, we want to map the data. We validate it, map data. We log in for return success. Then we want to generate the user, get the user. Um, here, yeah. generate token, generate the first token, then save it. Pass user ID and I refresh token. And now value should be greater than zero. So return the last one with the token and I refresh token. Okay. So if I log in again, we're going to add right so here there must be a change here instead of saving it we have to check if it is there then we update and now save and also when a revive token also comes in we need to also update it because by by the time revive token is called it means the token is already existing the table user can log in today and now uh, although the token has expired he can decide to log in again he can log out and log in again and in this case, it's going to store add. That's the reason why we have duplicate in there. So yeah, how can we do it? We can get the token. So we can have user token check. So you call to the inclusive token management dot 
um, you can use validate token here because this validate token takes in this takes in a refresh token isn't it so the refresh token that we have here is going to check from database and see if this token is found now this returns true or false so we can make here as explicit boo then I see the reason why this should be is it awaits okay now if this is true it means the user already exists then we're going to update it so if this user token check If this is a token check is true, it means I'm not going to um add. They're rather going to update. So we can call this. So maybe we can have this int down here and save token results initials equal to zero then let's get rid of this so if this is true meaning we want to update it so we say save token is equal to update then we need to pass in this user id we can get the user id from here user dot id then there is a refresh token so i want to update it else we go ahead and save it you see so we go ahead and i'll save this so another response we're going to check and i return this so we're updating it if the user is already there or adding if it's not there so yeah, as soon as this returns false, it tells you that user is not found. But as soon as it returns true, it means user is found in the table. So it means you want to update it. All right, so that is it. I think this will solve the issue. Let's go and clear this user's array. When we go to refresh tokens, we need to also clear them. Okay, and I think when you go to um, user rules, they should be cleared automatically. Oh, great. Now let's go and run them again. We're going to add another new registration. So now that we've seen that as soon as we register and login, we have a token which includes all the claims. We're not going to go that part again. It's going to focus on the refresh token aspect. Okay, so let's grab this. Let's log in. Sorry, it's registration, <laughs> not login. So you register. Let's also register for user. Okay, so let's go ahead and log in. So we have a token so for a quick check we can check um the claims again so we can be sure of what you're doing the row is admin great now let's grab the refresh token this is our refresh token now when you go to the table for refresh token we must have the user id and the token Yes, we have it. Ends with there's a nice C. We have only one. Now let's go and log in. Let's go and revive token. So pass in this token and I execute this. We also have an invalid token. Let's go and check. So authentication. We put a token, a key here, and execute. 
this is it so that is the token coming in let's go and validate and see so token management that validate so let's go for token management from the infrastructure and I have a token management and here we are going for looking for validate this one so let's click on next and now this is called so we have a token this is a token so this token we are checking if we have the same token start with I think LX and ends with equal to and to this so I think we have the same token isn't it let's go and see so token management and now let's see do we have it oh, okay this is now so this is not found maybe because of the less streamline this token let's see whether we can there is a percentage percentage I want to go to the token here. We have this forest slash, right? So it is converting these special characters into percentage. So how can we do this? So let's go to our token manager and try to uh, encode what we have in here to convert all these special characters. So we go to our infrastructure, token manage, management, and here let's search for generate refresh token, and that is it. So instead of this, let's say, let's make it string, and that is token. Now the next line, we want to say return web utility dot URL and code, we pass in this token. This is the solution. <laughs> So let's rerun this again. And now when you go to a user, you have user already created. So we're going to log in. We have user already here. Now when you go to the first token, we have nothing in the first token. All right, so let's go ahead and log in. So you're first going to log in as an admin at admin.com then admin at one two three let's log in so a breakpoint is hit I think uh, we need to continue And we have our token. So this token, when we check from gw2.io, it is the same admin. Let's verify that and see. You see, that's an admin. We have it a row. That's the most important thing. Now let's go and do refresh token. So let's grab this. Then let's go to revive. Then paste it in here. Execute breakpoint is it okay? So let's check it up. Validate it is there. You get user ID, you get user claims, new token, you get new fresh token, and I update it and I return new token. Check it up. So now we have new token with a new refresh token. Now let's grab this go to io paste this and I still have the admin right but the time has increased all right so for now we have authentication system uh, put in place with our refresh token support as well we have our product um, and a category crowd for each well what else check it in the next video